look at that beautiful view. Oh, we got here. There's the city. It's hard to believe an asper has been found intact there a thousand years after the War of the Magi. Think it's still alive? Probably, judging from the urgency of our orders. What about this? This witch? Why do we have to bring her? I heard she fried 50 of our Magitek armored soldiers in just a few minutes. I don't know if I want her along. Relax. The slave crown's on her. The slave crown on her head robs her of all conscious thought. She'll follow orders. We'll approach from the east. Move out. Welcome to my first episode of a brand new Let's Play. Bringing back the content to the YouTube channel. This is Final Fantasy 3 slash Final Fantasy 6. If you're in the US, it was released as Final Fantasy 3 on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. If you're in any other region, uh, it was released as Final Fantasy 6 on the Super Famicom. Now, this is not your traditional copy of Final Fantasy, and I'm going to start calling it just 6 from now on, so there's no confusion over which Final Fantasy it is. This is not a normal copy of Final Fantasy 6. Nay, good sirs, and gents, and madams, this is something a little different. This is a customized version of the game, known as Brave New World. There'll be a link to the patch in the description below. Uh, I will not be linking to the actual ROM, but instead to the IPS patch. So if you have an officially sanctioned copy of the game that you've dumped onto your computer, uh, you can apply this patch and you can be playing the same version as I am. Now this version changes quite a bit in the game, and I'm actually going in it mostly blind. I read a little bit of the synopsis, a little bit of what to expect, um, but I have not actually played this version of the game. And to be honest, I haven't played Final Fantasy VI in... <laughs> it must be almost ten years now. Uh, since this game came out and I played it. It might even be longer than ten years, to be honest with you. Ten years, that puts it at 2003. No, this would have been like 15 years, at least, since I've last played this game. And I'm looking forward to it. Now, one of the things that the... Uh, oh, there's Ted Woesley. Uh, he translated so many of the amazing classics in his own unique way. Oh, here we go. We're in, we're in Nash now. Let's put her on point. No sense taking any risks. Forward! I'm playing this game, as uh, you can probably tell, on an emulator. Uh, and I do actually own this game, and I own the Secret Strategy Guide. It's like a 400 page guide on this game, because this game was my childhood. Way back when. Uh, so far, it looks just like the standard copy of the game. I'm playing it with an SNES controller, too. I have a USB to SNES adapter that supports two SNES controllers, and I have, uh, for my trip in Taiwan, actually, I got picked it up in Taiwan, I'm pretty sure it's a Chinese knockoff SNES controller. It doesn't feel quite right, but it looks good. The buttons themselves, brand spanking new. But when you push them down, they just they don't feel like how I remember the SNES controller feeling. That being said, it's still much better than a keyboard and mouse. And I would say even better than using an Xcox 360 controller uh, to play the game as well. The only controller that might be better than this would be like if I took the PS Trips controller and plugged it in and got that set up. But I wanted an authentic feel. I wanted an authentic experience. Now, as I said, I'm going in pretty much blind. The one thing I've noticed right off the top that's different about this. Uh, first off, playing on the emulator. The colors look a little brighter than I remember them looking in the original game. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the emulator settings or what. But either way, I'm not complaining about that. Hells no. It looks nice and sharp. Uh, by the way, sorry if you can hear me clicking around on my mic there. The thing that I noticed is I recall all the names of the characters being in all caps. 
Biggs and Wedge, I thought were all caps in the game, and I seem to remember that being, that sticking out. And so that is a change that I find to be very good indeed. Now, at the beginning here, we will be including everything, all the battles, all that. As we progress, I imagine I'll be doing some editing on this because so much of an RPG is just grinding through the battles. And uh, you guys don't want to see that. But in this copy of the game, a bunch of stuff is supposed to be changed, including damage formulas, uh, bugs are supposed to have been fixed. I don't think I'm going to get a heal on this guy because, yep, battle's over. Uh, the level cap, I believe, is set to 50. The game's supposed to be a little bit more difficult. A lot of um, game breaking bugs that existed, including like, the sketch bug, are supposed to be fixed. It's just supposed to be an all-around better experience. Now, the story itself has not been changed, and so we'll still get to experience that, although some of the translations have been rewor reworked. Not that Wolseley wasn't the, uh, the premier translator of the time. That being said, we now uh, have a, a better understanding of, uh, of game translation, which is a really dick way of saying that. Back when Wolsey was doing it, there was nobody checking to see how accurate he was. He was basically like a, uh, a one-man crew. And now we have uh, different, I don't want to say better, but perhaps more accurate translations. And so I am looking forward to seeing what I remember from my childhood that's changed. That I remember completely wrong, or that I simply thought was the case and it was not. So here in the beginning of the game, I didn't actually read over the story as it was phasing through. I didn't want to ruin the, uh, the atmosphere there. But from my memory, because uh, I wasn't actually watching the beginning, uh, there's an Esper here in, in Nash, and it's just been discovered, and the Emperor's coming to get that shit. Why it is they send Biggs and Wedge, uh, and like Terra, and nobody else, to Nash? I've never really understood that. Now, those of you who have some experience with the original story uh, might know where I'm going with this, but those of you that don't, uh, the Empire, as, as in all games, kingdoms are good. You can trust a kingdom, but you cannot trust the Empire. Ever. Empire's always bad. In this game, it's no different. The Empire is the, the bad guys. Now, I'm not going to go into why and what they do and that kind of stuff. You'll experience that throughout the game, as I will, because I'm sure my memory is not so great of it. But they are this giant, you know, empire. I mean, the name itself begs an understanding of just this massive size and scope of their power. And they send three, two, basically two soldiers and a slave here to get this Esper, which is supposed to be like this incredibly important, super powerful thing that the Empire wants. According to our sources, the frozen Esper was found in a new mine shaft. This must be it. By the way, I'll be reading over the lines uh, as best I can. Both, of course, to practice my public speaking and reading skills, you know, because they're not perfect. Uh, <laughs> would you like to know more? No. I don't need to know about save spots. This is how save spots work. You save. It's a spot. You can do it. Awesome. Now, in this game, um, I'm going to use Cure. I'm actually going to use some of my MP here. Heal outside of battle. The magic system is supposed to be different in this hack, as is the Esper system. They've both been reworked. Let's, uh, let's just rock our way right through this gate. Stand back. I got this. Oh, I'll be reading it, unless you guys would like me to not read it. Feel free to leave comments below. And also, since this is the first video in the series, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be reading everything. We won't hand over the Esper! And what kind of what kind of voices I'll be using, that kind of stuff. Uh, if it sucks, let me know. Welk, get him! You have your first boss, and oh, listen to that beautiful boss music. Hold it! Think back to our briefing! What about it? Do you recall hearing about a monster that eats lightning? And stores it in its shell. Right, so whatever you do, don't attack the shell. Got it. First thing I'm going to do is attack the shell. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, don't, don't do that. Uh, Te oh, did he just heal? I don't remember this guy healing. Uh, Terra, by the way. Spoiler, question, 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 is actually Terra. Um, and I don't think I'm going to be renaming anybody in this game either. 
Yeah, he's, he's healing. Uh, yeah, let's not do that. Let's just use the heal, for, heal force. I'm actually going to want to go in and change the battle speed and stuff, too. I didn't do that. I should have been doing that. But, alas, I forgot. Look at the size of that heal, too. That's a good, a good amount of heal. Especially compared to the amount of uh, HP these guys have. He's just sitting here healing, like, 500 freaking damage. Which is a huge bummer. Let's get the tech missile. The firebolt. And the firebolt. This guy's healing a bunch. I'm not sure if his shell is the only thing healing, or if he's healing himself completely. Oh, well, doesn't matter, because I think he's dead. I actually remember this boss taking a lot longer and being more difficult. And then again, like I said, when I last played this... It, I'm 20, uh, 28 right now. When I last played this game, I must have been, like, 12 or something. Pretty, uh, pretty young. So, a lot of the stuff I assume was hard. And here's the Esper. Which is what we came for. We came to get this. The Empire wants this thing. This is the Frozen Esper. You don't really know what the Empire wants with these Espers at this point in the game. But you can assume that they're probably up to no good. And you would not be wrong in making that assumption. And this game's musical score is just... Hey, you! Witch! What's the matter? Something isn't right here. The frozen creature began emitting an eerie light. Those guys are like, what? Where's that light coming from? What the hell? Wedge! Where are you? What's going on? So, you never really, as far as I remember, you never find out what happened to those two guys. You, you can assume that they were killed. That's probably a safe assumption. But you never really, like, you know, where are, where'd you go? No explosion? Where did they go? Here, wait, get out of bed. Where am I? Whoa! And, only, and I only just removed the crown. My head hurts. The screen effect there, I love that. That's actually also the screen effect you get when you're poisoned. <laughs> Easy. This is a slave crown. Those soldiers had complete control over you while you were wearing it. I can't remember a thing. Don't worry. It'll all come back to you in time. She has the, the most well-established Japanese trope. Japanese RPG trope. Amnesia. A mysterious young woman controlled by the Empire and born with the gift of magic. And see, her name is Terra, and uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure in the original, it was all um, capitals. And so it's interesting to see that it's one of the things that they changed in the hack. My name is Terra. Impressive! I've never heard of anyone recovering this fast. So they, they brought on the dogs, and those are the Narsh, the Nash soldiers. Which is very interesting that the Nash soldiers want to get Terra. Open up! Give us the girl that was riding the Magitek armor! They've come to, to get her. Open up! We're here for the girl! She's an officer of the Empire! Now, I didn't notice this when I first played. The Nash people aren't the Empire people. They're actually their own independent nation, or whatever, city-state. Or some such thing. Empire? Magitek armor? Oh no. You have to get out of here. I don't have time to explain. Over here. By the way, gotta love the green hair. Make your way out through the mines. I'll keep these fools occupied. So he's helping me escape. And by the way, one of the other things you can do in the hack, you, you can run whenever you want. No need for the sprint shoes. She's up there! And then they go. Yeah. So let's just dash our way through here. Dashing. Repo Man. Our first, uh... I guess you call this like a normal battle. And Terra's actually pretty strong. Um, God, she's so slow on the... I forgot to go into the menu and change the battle speed. Battle's taking forever! That's something in this game you have to be uh, on the lookout for, too. In the hack notes, one of the things I read was that they changed the speed mechanic 
and the battle speed mechanic. So I'm interested to see what they've done to tweak that. So let's go to our config menu here, and uh, battle speed, 6, message speed, 6, no, no, it's fast or slow, so we don't have to be way over here at 1. Uh, the gauges are on stereo, hopefully you guys can hear me in stereo as well. Sorry if, if my uh, mic is all balanced on one side, it should not be. The controller, single and multiple, I'm not sure how you can play with multiple players in this game. No, uh, no clue. Uh -huh, I can change our window style. Uh, I'm thinking like keeping it the way it is. Yeah, let's uh, let's just keep it the way it is. Let's not mess with that stuff. I might mess with, I might tweak with that outside of the game, but uh, for the purposes of this video, let's not mess with that. Wild rats, another new enemy. Uh, three on one, not very fair, but to be honest, I don't think that Terra's got anything to worry about. She starts with good attack. Um, I don't remember her being this strong. I'm not sure again if this is a part of the hack or not. And her bar is so slow. She's gotta be the slowest character. I'm pretty sure I set that stuff all to fast. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna go back and check, but oh my goodness, it is so damn slow! Wow! I definitely don't remember the battle timer being this damn slow. And that could be something to do with her being like level 1 or 2 here. Pretty early in the game. I don't know if she's level 1 or 2. She might be like... 4? Is she level 4? Yeah, she's 4. Let's check the config. Yeah, it is indeed on fastest, fastest. And let's set the battle timer to a battle mode to active. Active mode and passive mode. One, the menu pauses. And, uh... When you're doing commands, like you're choosing spells and stuff, it, it pauses. Other one, it keeps moving. Although you can see 1.3.0, that's the version of Brave New World that I've loaded up here. And I'm not going to save. I just saved. I'm not going to open those chests either. I'm not 100% sure. There are some chests at the beginning of the game that if you don't open, when you come back later, they actually have better loot in them. I'm not sure if those are any of those chests or not. I didn't do any uh, research before picking this back up, so my uh, play might be a little rusty, and my knowledge of the game is all based on almost 15-year-old memories, and as such, you have to forgive me if I'm making critical mistakes. One thing I want to mention, I am open to, uh, such oh, I can't believe we missed, I'm open to suggestions and tips, hints, that sort of thing, especially if you've played the Brave New World hack. Uh, I would like to get this game a little bit of uh, attention, because it looks like this hack. Uh, the, the people who've worked on this hack, based just on reading the notes, the change notes, and also the like readme file that came with it, they have spent a ton of time on this game, and invested a lot of, uh, a lot of love into it. And because of that, I'm really interested to play it through all the way from beginning to end. Terra leveled up, and I got a dried meat. I'm pretty sure that is an item you're not supposed to be able to get here. So that's cool. I also heard that they changed the stealing and item drops quite a bit in this game. There she is! Now, I'm not sure why the Nash soldiers want me. I would guess because I came bowling through in my Magitek armor and they want to put me in uh, Nash prison or put me on like Nash trial. Oh, she fell. And passed out. Yeah. That is a shame. My sweet little witch! <laughs> this slave crown, you'll be mine to do with as I see fit. Well, wow, what a perverted thing to say, Kafka. And by the way, props to you. Kefka has one of the most memorable laughs in video game history. Faux show. I'm not controlling this, by the way. I'm pretty sure it's obvious, but in case you're wondering where. <laughs> Good. Burn it all down. I have not decided on the Kefka voice. Kefka, by the way, also one of the most memorable uh, villains 
He's just evil to the core. Final Fantasy has lots of great villains. The whole series has lots of, of very good characters. But Kafka... Man, he's just... he's rough. Soldiers of the Empire, we stand on the brink of a new era! In the days to come, we will witness the complete revival of magic! It is our destiny and ours alone to take this mystic force and claim what is rightfully ours! With our newfound power, nothing shall stand in our way. <sighs> Long live Emperor Castal! <sighs> Long live Emperor Castal! We got three uh, of the leaders there, three of the commanders behind him. There's Kafka, who we've been introduced to, and two characters we don't know yet. And also, in the back corner, you've got Terra. And there she lands. There she lays. Deader than a doornail. And here we enter one of my favorite characters, who is absolutely amazing in this game. Although, to be honest, he might not be as good in the hack, since they took away a lot of the potential of steel. Took you long enough. How goes the robbing and plundering trade? Oh, gotta love that epic music. Treasure Hunter and Trail Worn Traveler. Searching the world over for relics of the past. This man's name is Locke. That's what I call him, Locke. It could be Loki, but I think that's actually supposed to be pronounced Locke. A Locke. It could be Locke. I'm gonna call him Locke. Love Locke. I prefer the term treasure hunter. Ha! <laughs> Semantic nonsense. There's a huge difference. Anyway, you sent for me? Yeah, there's a girl I'd like you to meet. A girl? You don't mean... The city guard is pursuing her even as we speak. Even if we were willing to oppose the Empire, this town alone is no match for them. Uh, I know I read that wrong. My bad. <laughs> Our independence can only be assured if we join with the Returners. That girl wasn't responsible for her actions. We must get her to understand our dilemma. Alright. I think we'd better help her. Agreed. She escaped into the mines, but there's no telling how long she can hide. Rescue her, then make your way to Figaro. The king should be able to help. When Locke shows up, you know shit is getting good, because he's got the upbeat adventure music. So he found her, no problem, right? No problem finding her. And here comes the guard. How he's able to see her... I mean, if you look at this map and you try and think from his perspective... Giant rock wall right in front of him. Now we've got her! And here come, what, like, his... Half-wolf, half-people companions. Because I guess the, the city guard is not above using monsters to defend the city. Wonderful. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, we got some crew! <laughs> They're checking her out. Moogles? Are you saying you want to help? Koopa! Koopa! Use us? Oh, I will. To save Terra from the guards. Need some info? Nah. I'll figure it out. So let's run lock forward here. Just march this man in here. Let's kill all the enemies. Lobo and Mammoth. Again, why these wild animals are willing to help out is a mystery to me. No clue at all. But they're not going to stand a chance. And Locke, by the way, got a whole party of Moogles. Kupek! Kupap! Kumama! I'm not sure if those names... I think those names are always the same. It'd be nice if, like, the game randomly picked some cool something names to hook you up with, so the Mog's are always different. But you got all these Moogles, and, uh, this is, like, one of the only spots in the game that you encounter Moogles. Which is odd, because you think that if they're so common here in the caves under Nash, they would exist elsewhere in the world. Like, as 
semi-sentient, magical animals that can talk and stuff. I mean, they can at least kupo and, and kupa. But, as far as I know, they're never seen anywhere else in the game. Let's hit this guy from the back. I'm using Locke to take down all these enemies. By the way, I'm not sure if this is actually a decent strategy or not. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's probably not. Uh, it makes more sense to, you know, share the damage, share the experience. Well, I mean, not share the experience. That's why I'm doing it, is because I want Locke to get all the experience. The other mogs, they don't matter. As far as I know, they, um, you never see them again. Except for one of them. Which is one that's not in Locke's party. Unfortunately. So, you know, at this point in the game, you have no magic on anybody but Terra. Every character in this game, by the way, for those of you not entirely familiar with Final Fantasy VI, every character has like its own spe their own special... I almost want to call it like a class skill, but it's not really a class skill because there are no classes in this game. Like, Locke has Steel, because he's a member of the quote-unquote thief class, but he's the only thief you're going to get in the entire game. And so it's like a lock skill, it's not really a thief skill. And that, uh, that can make every playthrough much, much different, depending on who you choose to use. Because there are more than four characters in this game, and there are times in the game when you get to pick your party. And, uh, I haven't decided yet what kind of party I'm going to be going with. Because this is a hack and not the original, and the stuff I read in the little highlights have, uh, have informed me that it makes a lot of sense to use magic, heavy characters. Uh, but I might, I might want to stick with my usual party. When I was younger, I played with Sabin, who we haven't met yet, Edgar, who we haven't met yet, Locke, and uh, one other character. Usually that was, um, it, it varied. Uh, do I have heals? I have dry meat. So let's bring everybody back up to full. I'm surprised I don't have any tonics. Usually I think you start with tonics. I guess in this game you start with dried meat. Again, it's a hack, so, you know, there are going to be lots and lots of little things I'm going to notice that are different. And I'll do my best to point them out as I catch them, but don't be surprised if there are things that are much different from the original game. And because I haven't played the original in 15 years, I, I simply miss them. I don't catch the differences. Oh, nice. Good block there. And let's fight the head guy. Get that beautiful boss music. Gotta love the boss music. He's going to start off with Net. I believe that's a stop, and yes, it does indeed appear to be a stop spell. You can look at the active battle bars at the bottom, the active timer bars, whatever they're called. And Kupek, his bar is actually stopped. Uh, that guy just blew Kumama. Not, uh, I'm not going to complain about that. I'm okay with uh, Kumama getting a little bit of blow there. No problemo. And these bosses at the beginning of the game here, you can call them bosses. I mean, Marshall's like a normal enemy. It's just a boss in this context. Oh shit, Kumama just got floored. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Because those guys are going to leave my party right now. Since that battle is complete and this section, this little event is finished. Um, as I was saying. Oh, what was I saying? <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually reading this and so I... I uh, lost track. So those those mogs are gone. I'm never going to see them again. Doesn't matter if that one died or not. Now take note of this. This actually comes back multiple times in the game. And don't you love how he puts her down, face down on the ground? Uh, just, I mean, you can if you look at her sprite. I remember when I was a kid, I actually thought her face was at the top and her like dress was at the bottom, and she had some kind of weird mermaid dress going on. But if you take note of the color of her hair being green, you can see that her face is actually at the bottom. And she's face downward. He just put her face right into the floor. And <laughs> just leaves her there. Uh, doesn't even turn her right side up. He's just he's checking out that Terra ass is what it is. Eh? You're back with us now? You saved me? Save your thanks for the Moogles. Ugh. Ugh. I can't remember anything. Y you have amnesia? I must make you the main character of this game. A man said my memory would come back. Give it time. You're safe with me. I give you my word. Trust me. I won't leave you until your memory returns. 
until all you think about is me. It's Tara and Locke heading out the front here. Now, there's one more thing we're going to do before we call this uh, a, a completed episode one here. And that is check out this house right here. This is the classroom for beginners. Even veterans may learn that they still have much to learn. May find that they still have much to learn from us, however. Please, speak with everyone here and heed their advice. Now, one of the things that was mentioned at the beginning of the highlights about this uh, this hack is to come into the beginner's classroom uh, and definitely don't skip this. Now, in a normal playthrough, I'd probably skip this area. Many enemies will counter specific commands with powerful attacks. Others may behave differently if significantly damaged. If certain statuses are set, or if you dispatch their allies. As strategy is more important now than ever, I urge you to choose WAIT in the config menu instead of ACTIVE. You know what? Just because the game told me to, I'm going to switch it over to WAIT for, for now. We'll see if that's actually something I care to keep. Advanced Battle Tactics. I'm going to go through all these guys with you here. Uh, if, at this point, you don't want to go through this, and you just like to get back to the action, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. But if not, stick around. Because we're actually going to check out every one of these guys. And see if they tell us anything that's different about this hack from the original game. Need status info? Yes. If you don't know what this one is, there is no helping you. An answer. Okay. Oh, poison. Dark. Halves the hit rate of fight. Can be cured with eye drops. In the original game, this was actually bugged. And Dark did nothing. Dark did absolutely nothing. In the, this hack, it should be fixed. Imp. Lose special, lose use of special commands and magic can be cured with or caused by the imp spell. Bzerk. Battle power up, but character is uncontrollable and will do nothing but fight. Sleep. This status is lifted when afflicted is struck with a physical attack. Muddle. Sort of like sleep, except you attack your teammates. Mute. Can't cast spells or use attacks that cost MP. Note that many enemy attacks don't cost MP. Seizure. What? Was there a seizure in the original game? Basically, a milder form of poison. Really? A seizure is mild, huh? Can only be cured by setting regen. Zombie. HP goes to zero, and you attack your allies for de their delicious brains. Cured with revivify. Stoned. HP doesn't go to zero, but you're still pretty much dead until it's cured. Condemned. When the time reaches zero, you're dead. A remedy spell or item will cure any of the negative status effects except for Condemned, Zombie, and Seizure. I don't remember if there was Seizure in the original. Using Rage causes you to take all, all the attributes of an enemy, including status and elemental resistances and weaknesses. Be careful, this includes the Undead property and lots of healing absorption attacks. Attack reversal shit that goes with it. So, like, if you become a zombie, you can be healed to death as opposed to, you know, damaged to death. Use elemental attacks wisely to maximize damage in combat. Human foes, for example, are especially vulnerable to poison. Bolt and water are most effective against mechanical enemies. Bolt also works well on anything that flies. And while ice may not be one of the more powerful elements, it still kills killed the dinosaurs. So there's a hint there. Reptile enemies, I guess, are weak to it. Earth and wind attacks, on the other hand, are very powerful normally, but no enemies have weaknesses to them. Holy elemental spells, including cure ones, curative ones, are best used on the undead for major damage. And if all else fails, kill it with fire. Vanish and image make it impossible for physical hits to physical attacks to hit you. Magical attacks will never miss a target affected by vanish, however, and getting hit removes the status. Vanish will not make doom work on bosses, though. That sort of douchebaggery doesn't fly here anymore. So that was a well-known bug in the uh, original. As well, if you used Vanish on bosses, you could then X-Zone or Doom them, and it had a 100% hit rate. Because after a target was vanished, every spell would, was a guaranteed hit. Including instant death spells. No longer the case. Fractional damage attacks like Demi work on any enemy that doesn't resist its element and isn't a boss or mini-boss. Using multi-elemental magic? Remember that resistance, is, resistance to any element will trump a weakness to another. Good to know. Slow and Seizure may not be as debilitating as other statuses, but they almost always work, even on bosses. Haste and Regen are their opposite effects. Setting one will cancel out the other. Reflect, spe reflect repels most magic damage that doesn't forcibly target all allies or foes. However, it won't work on spells randomly cast from weapons or magic reflected off another target. Again, good to know.
Jump is more powerful than Fight, and it does even more damage if a spear is equipped. For best results, use, use with two hands. Uh, double entendre. It also increases the damage dealt by spells randomly cast from weapons, unless it's a spell that ignores defense. Random spell casts that don't ignore defense from automatic critical hits from rods receive an even greater damage bonus. Morph boosts all damage output by 50% in the same manner as above. Though it also doubles damage... To, so that's new. That's new. I don't remember Morph ever doubling the damage you take. This, low, this damage penalty can be lowered by raising Terra's stamina. So the Morph thing up here apparently has been completely changed. And let's check out this guy. The stamina tribute allows you a chance to evade many different attacks, namely those that set status ailments. It also guards against attacks that drain HP MP, do fractional damage, like Demi, or simply kill you outright, like Doom. Stamina raises the HP restored by regen and now actually lowers, rather than raises, the HP drain from seizure. Many commands, such as regen and remedy spells, or the GP toss skill, now also use it to determine their power. And the dance skill now even uses stamina to lower the odds of stumbling in non-native terrain. For more details on what the tributes can do, please read the fucking manual, the readme, and the printme. Good to know. Good to know. Battle tactics! When your character starts to glow, here's what you need to know! Oh, this is neat. Blue is reflect. Yellow is safe. Green is shell. And by the way, my character is actually glowing this, which I love. Red is haste. White is slow. Pink is stop. Hammer time! No, we're not going to do it. So that's, that's, I don't remember that actually being in the game, but that might have been in the original game too. Runic can absorb any magic spell, the kind you learn from espers, but won't work on blue magic used by enemies. As, just as with Bushido, which I believe is the sword tech in this game, you can't use Runic without a sword or knife equipped. Likewise, Sketch will not work without a paintbrush equipped, since it's hard to draw with a rod or a knife. Now that's new, because I remember that she could draw with anything. So now she can only draw if she's got the the uh, paintbrush in hand, which is neat. That's a good change, I think. During the battle, press left or right on the control pad to select defense or row. Defense halves all damage taken and works until that character acts again. Row moves character front or back or vice versa. This can be very useful. Be careful when caught in pincer attacks. Characters will take and deal damage if they are all in the front row. The same can be true for your enemies. Hit them in the back during side fights with fight or jump for extra damage. Good to know. LR all to select multiple targets with any spell with no targeting restrictions such as Terra's Fire and Cure spells. The damage or healing dealt by a spell split in this manner will be reduced by 50. The penalty also applies to spells and attacks that hit multiple targets by default, unless otherwise stated. Some attacks, or summoned espers in particular, do not suffer a split loss. Summoned espers also hit both sides of a pincer attack, whereas commands with free or group targeting do not. Aside from magic, the only manual command to have free targeting are throw and GP toss. X or Y to cycle through allies, to run, hold down L and all, fast characters like Locke are better at running away than others. For slower characters, the best it's best to warp from unwanted fights, especially later in the game when running gets harder. All characters occupy the front row by default. You can change the menu screen. Placing a character in the back row halves physical damage both dealt and taken. Penalty of damage dealt also applies to spells randomly cast from weapons. Some weapons and some special skills, jump or tool for example, will do full damage from the back row. Other skills, Bushido and Blitz in particular, do not. Confused about what isn't physical? Simply put, all damage is magical unless otherwise stated. This includes attacks like Aura Bolt that are powered by the user's stamina but are technically still magical attacks. The Print Me specifically notes physical damage as such. The in-game descriptions are more concise due to space limitations. I'm not going to be looking at that readme file while I play. Not going to be doing it. Katanas and spears can be used with two hands to increase their battle damage by 50%. Claws, knives, and some special weapons allow the use of a second weapon. Using two weapons will cause the damage output of both to be reduced by 25%. Gauntlet? Genji Glove? What emblazes are those? Are you on dope, son? Oh, so you don't even need those anymore. That is cool. That is cool. So I could just, like, if I had it, I could just drop another weapon in there. I do not have another weapon. By the way, look at that. Mithril Bola? I don't, know, I don't know what the hell that is. Terra actually does more damage, it looks like, than, than Locke. Uh, these things right here, these stats, they're going to be much more important in this game. I'm already feeling it. 
already feeling it. Other game, the stats were kind of iffy. A character equipped with a paintbrush will cure HP with their attack rather than damage. Oh! So, Realm doesn't actually dish out physical damage, it would seem, because she's the only one that can equip paintbrushes. Class for beginners. Even veterans may find that there's so much to learn from us. Please speak with everyone here and heed their advice. No problem. It's a full heal. Seizure lights. This is water from a recovery spring. Have a drink. I already did, sir. Environmental science. Neat. This is a save point. We can save the game at save points. Hence the name. You must use Slimbagger 10 as save point to restore your party. Save often because should you die in battle, it's back to the title screen with you. There are no more mulligans. Of course, save states are far more convenient as long as you don't use them to cheat. And actually, that's a good point. I will be using save states, uh, but not save scumming with them. At this point in my in my plans for this uh, for this let's play, I think I'll be using the save in game, and I'll be using save states only when I quit. But we'll see. I I'm I'm flexible, and to be honest with you, this is as much your playthrough as it is my playthrough. And so, if you guys would like me to save scum it. Let me know, and I'll be more open to that. If you think an actual, real playthrough, treating this hack like it is an actual NES or SNES game, is your style, then I'm, I'm, that's that's the default I'm going with. But like I said, I'm willing I'm willing to budge. If you want to run, just hold down the B button. I am, ha <laughs> ha, love it. Lighter armor may not be as defensive as the heavier stuff. It's the heavy stuff, but it makes it easier for the wearer to dodge attacks. Other types of armor are better at protecting you from magical damage. Most relics also provide defensive bonuses and or attribute bonuses in addition to their regular effects. Coordinate them accordingly with your armor setup for maximum enjoyment. <laughs> Gotta love that maximum enjoyment. I know I do. Dried meat is cheap and very good at keeping you alive early in the game. Stock up on them! Tonics and potions restore fractions of your maximum HP. This will be more useful later on. Ooh, now that is new as well. In the original game, I believe tonics were a 50 HP heal. And I think potions were like a 250? Maybe a 150 or 250 heal? It's a trap! Ah, it's a trap! We got a dinosaur here. Let's go and try and steal from this guy. So a gum pod, whatever the fuck. Oh, he's using Snoo Snoo! Ho! Oh! Uh, are we boned here? I can't believe he killed Locke in one hit. Uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I can't run, can I? Nope. I hope he doesn't kill him. I, I would be so freaking pissed if I died in the tutorial area. Uh, having not saved, first off, let's just keep using fire until I get this guy down. Dinosaur. I don't remember this guy being able to one-hit KO you. I can't believe he's an attack called Snoo Snoo, by the way. Pretty funny. There you go. He's dead. Da, 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 da. Cool. Uh, I'm going to go right outside now, just in case, and uh, drink from this glorious healing spring. Yeah, that does indeed bring me back up. Now, what did I steal? I stole Gum Pod. Oh, here you go. Cures 100 HP... Cures max HP times a half. So this is like a half heal. Fully restores ally. And I don't know what this gum pod does. It doesn't say. This is absolutely nothing. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if that's um a new item or what. Some chests will contain better loot if you wait until later in the game to open them. I think it is a Schrodinger's chest. Worried about missing out on some rare stuff like this? Don't be. We hate this kind of thing as much as you do. Neat. Want how to ride a chocobo? Uh, do a <laughs> do a barrel roll. Go forward, dismount, do a barrel roll. Steel is a useful way to save money on expendable items by acquiring them from item enemies. Use it against foes who might be holding something, namely those of the human variety. Trying to steal something from a monster is a good way of getting yourself killed. <gasps> oh, maybe that's why he snoo snooed me. When buying equipment, symbols appear next to your characters. If I compare it to what they already have on, I really say much though since most equipment does more than just boost raw battle power defense. The Alphamax command on the menu screen didn't take any of this into consideration, which is why we've disabled it. We've tried to provide as much detail in game as possible, but it's generally best to consult the print me for specifics. Ah, oh, shit. I don't want to have to read that thing. And by the way, I, I believe I've already talked to this man. 
I think I've actually talked to everybody. Did I talk to this guy as well? I did. So that's it. This is everybody here. We have now mastered the game. Oh, come on. Just stop talking to me. I think I might have talked to him twice. There we go. And drink this one more time, because why not? So at this point, I'm going to step out. If you go up here, they'll actually run you out of town. See? Eh? Who the hell are you? Oh, shit, guys! No going back in now. You better hightail it for Figaro. So there you go. You can't go back in at this point. So I'm going to go right ahead. And you can save anywhere you want on the world map. So I'm going to save it here. And I'm going to thank you guys for watching the first episode of my Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI, ROM Hack, Brave New World. I'm going to call it a blind run. Just because I haven't actually played this ROM hack, and it's been over a decade since I played the actual game. So it, I'm pretty blind here. I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I have a pretty good idea of the general progression of the story, but it's been so long. So thank you guys once again. I don't ask this during all the videos, but since this is the first one of a brand new series, if this is something you'd like to see, would you kindly give it a thumb up and write me a little comment? Let me know that this is something you're interested in. Uh, and until next time... I ask one thing of you and only one thing. Would you please stay classy? Thanks, and see you next time.